Hey, how y'all doing? What's going on? It's a sad day. DJ, stop the beat. All right, we have two people here, two black women that got the BBL, and they end up leaving this earth. And guess what? They are breaking down, girl. They are setting up meetings just to talk about the BBLs and how many women are leaving this earth about the BBLs and what to do and what not to do. Now, if you had a BBL and you've had complications, please email me at missgg at myyahoo.com or a friend or a family member or sister of yours left this earth from the BBL and you want to tell your story, email me, girl. Let's get it on. Now, I want to play this video. This is two um, sad stories, and they're letting you guys know what to do, what to look out for, considering the BBL. We are at Fox News, so let's check it out. Let's start from the top. And welcome back to the second half hour of The Factor Uncensored. It's a new year, and for mm -hmm. some people, it's a chance to create a new look for themselves. Mm -hmm. We just talked about the obsession with the ladies a few minutes ago here on The Factor Uncensored. Now we're discussing and going to discuss how dangerous the procedure can be. Two women, both mothers, got the procedure, and we heard about them over the weekend. Just devastating stating to many of the people who read it and they ended up dying. Secreta Tolliver traveled from Chicago to the Dominican Republic for her BBL. She died from internal bleeding while recovering from the procedure last month. 26-year-old Janisha Jayla Williams got surgery for both a BBL and a butt lift in 2021. Sadly, she never woke up once the surgery was completed. Turns out an unlicensed doctor gave her anesthesia. Board certified plastic surgeon and the man who has been ringing the alarm here in Houston for months, Dr. Malik Cuddy joins me now here on The Factor Uncensored to hear and, and we all saw those pictures on social media. And as I got them, I sent them to my producer to hear that such young people lives have ended as a result of them seeking beauty, dying to be beautiful in their minds. Your thoughts about seeing so many young people in their lives as a result of getting plastic surgery. Well, I think you have to really think about how those patients end up where they end up to have those operations and that's really where the problem lies. Uh, if you separate out the people who had serious problems or a death from everyone else, I think what you'd find is the vast majority of them are being done by surgeons who should not be doing it. They're done in facilities where surgery shouldn't happen. Uh, the anesthesia services are really substandard. The the, the vast majority of problems are happening in those situations, um, but... And unfortunately, doctor, what we have is individuals who find the cheap route. These are people who are not board certif certified, not in this country, in one case, the Dominican Republic. In another case, this person did not have a license. And so he sure right. Y'all got to stop doing that cheap route. You know, spend that money. Your life is on the line. It's okay to spend money. Uh, it, it save your life. Always trying to go the cheap route. The men in Republic, Colombia, and all them other places in Mexico, they have a real cheap. No, it's come on now. And then some of them want to go to Mexico and all them other places because they can get you real snatch. Snatch your soul out your body and leave you unalive. You better go to an American doctor that's uh, certified and know what they're doing, okay, and pay that money. And if you can't, uh, mm, let me, let's play. They're likely charging cheaper rates. Oh, they definitely are charging less. And, you know, you have people who are, that say, you find uh, a surgeon uh, to perform the procedure in the first place, and you find him on TikTok and on TikTok or Instagram. You have all these different doctors advertising services, basically, you know, just as if it were any other commodity. And uh, people will gravitate toward the ones that are cheaper. And they don't understand that it's not a commodity. There's a big difference between this operation or any plastic surgery operation being done by somebody who's qualified 
and somebody who should absolutely not be doing it. The ones who shouldn't be doing it are doing it very cheaply, and the patients don't understand that. And I think people think, okay, so this is just my ass. My ass is not going to kill me, but it could if it's, it's, it's not properly done by someone who knows what they're doing. I don't like how he worded that. He tried to be a comedian or something. Your butt did not kill you. It's the doctor. The doctor didn't know what they're doing. The doctor took you out of here. It's not the butt. Ain't nothing wrong with your behind. It's the doctor. The doctor do not know what they're doing. Either with, um, you heard one of them left this earth because of anesthesia, and the other one left this earth because of bleeding complications after the surgery. Your ass it can't. Come on now. I don't like how he worded. And uh, what I can do is give you a, a, just kind of a brief example of a particular problem that can happen. Uh, there's something called a fat embolus, which is a small amount of fat accidentally gets injected into a blood vessel that goes in, into the uh, circulation and can kill a patient very quickly. That problem is something that's avoided with excellent training and experience. And that's something that the cheap doctors don't have. If they mm -hmm. had that kind of training, they wouldn't have to do it so cheaply. Uh, that's just one and example. And really quick, many of those doctors who are not like an oral surgeon who, who will do this, they get like a weekend of training. Yes, or a course, very common. And then they start the procedure. Yeah, very common. And uh, I think I've talked about it before. Uh, there's a course that has a 15-minute segment on patient safety. So you're not going to catch these kinds of very important things. You're not going to have somebody who's been trained under the supervision of other really experienced surgeons and exactly how to do these things and avoid those kinds of complications. But you know, any operation can have a complication. You can have bleeding. You can get an infection. You can have anesthesia problems. Uh, but it, you limit the chance of those happening if you are choosing the right surgeon, and that's what board certification for plastic surgeons is all about. You know, you have somebody, you have to have certain types of training, you have to have a certain amount of experience, and then you have this large group of very, you know, highly respected surgeons looking at your abilities and saying, okay, we think that you're good enough that you can go out and you can do these for, pe for people. And if you don't have board certification, usually it's because you just don't have that kind of an experience. And so when we talk about these procedures and individuals who are putting their lives at risk, what can you say? Because I looked at all of these posts over the weekend, not just the weekend, but during the holiday when I was off, and I'm like, here's another one, here's another one. Here's what can we say, if anything, to people out there who are looking to go the cheap way through medical tourism, going to a foreign country where they can save money, or those who may not be board certified? Well, you know, well, what I tell people, what I charge for this operation is going to be more than it is if you go to the Dominican Republic, you know, but what I tell people is don't be price sensitive, and it, it sounds kind of self-serving, but it's to say don't make the cost of the operation the first consideration. You know, it's not like just having this particular operation is the same no matter who does it, and you just should just go with the cheapest thing. It's not like gasoline. Right, right. You know, that, that's the, the thing that people just don't get, that there is a difference between different doctors who do these things. And, and it's not just the surgeon, you know, anesthesia. Uh, if, if you're having it done cheaply, you're definitely getting cheap anesthesia. And people don't think about that. They're thinking about the doctor and only the doctor. They don't think about what kind of facility it is. They don't think about who's giving them anesthesia. And what I tell the patients when I do surgery on them, I say, the, the most important person in the room is, is you. The second most important person is the anesthesiologist, because mm -hmm. they're the ones who are keeping you alive during that operation. Very sensitive procedure. And also, you know, many people get these procedures done in another country and hop on the plane the same day or the next day and you shouldn't do that but dr cuddy we'll continue to talk about this as long as it takes to get it to the public we appreciate you stopping by the all right well you heard it there comment we want to know what you guys think about this and i see y'all on another video bye